Hi, this is Natalie of the Vintage Cross Stitch Niche bringing you another fun filled video. Hopefully, it is Friday afternoon. This video will go up over the weekend at some point. And I have a bunch of stuff to show you. I have a bunch of stuff to show you. I have progress on my sampler, my Christmas sampler. I've got a bunch of vintage items and ant actual antique items that I picked up in an antique show and market last week. I have a 2006 Christmas Ornament Edition to show you, a cross-stitch Christmas to show you, and an interesting book that I found called Great Sewing and Accessories to Show. I hope the color is good. It looks sort of pink when I look into the... I hope it doesn't come out that way, but we'll see. Hmm. I have a lot of plans for this weekend. Tomorrow, I have been volunteered to work at the... What do they call themselves? <laughs> the Palm Beach County... Fruit Council. And what it is, it is a bunch of people, gardeners basically, who do fruit trees and who grow fruit trees. And predominantly mango and avocado are the most common, but we also grow things like jaboticaba, sapodilla, uh, what else? Uh, you, people grow grapes and Floridian grapes, which are which are muscadine grapes. I'm just thinking about all the different trees. Citrus, of course, but there are issues with citrus. I'm not going to get into that here. Sadly, in Florida, there are issues with citrus. And um, let's see, Mamie Sapote, among many other very rare fruits. So, I actually have a bunch of fruit trees. I don't know. I haven't counted them. Probably 12 or 13, maybe more. Mostly mango. But uh, anyway, they have twice a year a big fruit sale. Fruit tree sale. Not fruit sale, but fruit tree sale. Some people might bring fruit as well to sell. And it's a fundraiser for the group. The group meets once a, once a month in at uh, Mount's Botanical Garden. I'm a member of this group for many years, although I have not gone to a, an actual lecture in a few months. They have a lecture and a meeting once a month. It depends on the guest lecturer. I usually go when there's a topic I'm interested in hearing or somebody I know. I probably should go more often. But it is Friday nights and I'm tired and my husband doesn't want me going after a week of working out to something he's not a part of so I know isn't that silly but uh, I really should go anyway I am working tomorrow volunteering at the fairgrounds in Palm Beach County if there's any local people that watch this video it's it'll probably be posted too late <laughs> but anyway it's a lot of fun and on Sunday I am going to start uh, going to church group at nine o'clock I have been going to church on and off, and the reason I have not gone consistently is that I had a job, saying goodbye to somebody, had a job that uh, I was working just about every weekend, either a Saturday or a Sunday, and it was a 24-hour shift, so if I work Sunday the 24-hour shift, <coughs> excuse me, if I work 24-hour shift on Sunday, obviously I'm not going to church. If I worked on Saturday, I got home Sunday and I was exhausted, I wasn't going to church. And then some weekends I'd work on a Friday too, but then it, it sort of just set the stage for a very hard weekend and I stopped going. And then my husband didn't want to go, so I wasn't going consistently. But somebody I know is actually a big part of this church that I started, uh, that we, my husband and I started going to. And I told her my plight that... Uh, you know, I wanted to start going again now that I have more time and a new job. And then I didn't really want to go because my husband 
isn't a part of, uh, doesn't really want to go very often. And she said, just come. And so she invited me on Sunday to actually be part of a group so that maybe I can meet people. So that when I go to church, I don't feel like I'm just sitting alone and, uh, you know, just sort of all by myself. So busy weekend. That's a lot of stuff. And one more thing. I think my husband wants to go to the local Halloween, whatever you want to call it. It's called, what is it? I forgot the name of it, but it's some sort of um, Halloween haunted house kind of thing where they have carnival rides and carnival food and some haunted houses. Houses are a little, they're a little nasty. I mean, it doesn't bother me. I'm a surgeon for God's sakes. And most of it's kind of funny to me, but they're a little nasty, but it's, it's hilarious. I think it's very funny, a lot of the, the stuff they do and some of the characters, so. I think he wants to go on probably Saturday night or Sunday night. I don't think he wants to go tonight. I hope not anyway, but so that's a busy weekend. That's a lot of stuff. Enough about me. Um, first I want to start off with showing you my favorite Halloween accessory. I got this from Target a few years ago. That's amazing. It's Bella Lugosi. Lugosi. Listen. It's alive! It's alive! It's alive! Bella Lugosi. And the uh, battery hasn't run out yet, but it looks like it just takes some uh, sort of, uh, I don't know, some sort of battery thing. I've had, I've had the battery. It says, Frankenstein is a trademark and copyright of Universal Studios. Well, that's sad. And apparently there's a sensor. I think I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put the sensor on. So when people walk by now, they're gonna get this. But anyway, I have it in a place where people just naturally start playing with it. Got this at Target a few years ago. I don't know if they sell it anymore. It is my, our favorite thing. Got a little discolored because our attic gets very hot. I think some of the plastic just sort of. Just like oh my God. I better stop that. I'm gonna take off the. Uh... I gave you life. I gave you life. Okay, anyway, time to put this away so it doesn't annoy everybody. <laughs> but I wanted to show it to you. <laughs> it's my favorite thing. I also wanted to show you another Halloween finish I had that I really liked. This little pillow. I don't remember who makes this. I don't remember. I'm sure somebody will recognize it, but pretty, pretty much just on a piece of mystery fabric. It's got really cute candy cane fabric, and it's got this, I put the buttons, button eyes. Very cute, I love it. Anyway, that's another one of my favorite, my favorite finishes. So I, I thought I'd show that to you just to show it. Okay. Next, I've been working on Christmas Village Sampler. I want to get this done. I won't really want to get this done. But anyway, it's Margaret and Margaret. And I did a conversion. Some people on the Vintage Cross Stitch Niche page asked me about the conversion, so I posted it there. But the conversion is all to Fancy Floss. Just to show you. Beautiful colors. And here we go. Let's see if I can... I'm trying to undo this just a little so you can see the whole everything I've worked on. I've got about half done. Here you go. Can you see? So I especially like the border with the little with the holly and the little berries. And I just love the way it's coming out with the variegated, gently variegated threads. And this is called Vintage Homespun by 
R&R. &R. Uh, I did not do a lot of thought into, I usually are hem and haw over what kind of fabric. I just picked the fabric when I was at the cross stitch cupboard. Did a conversion right then and there by pulling out the DMC and comparing and putting them together. Converting from DMC to Fancy Floss is loads of fun. They have to coordinate together and you want them to look in the same color scheme as the DMC. These actually are pretty good. I'm very happy. Anyway, this half done. So what do I have left? I have to finish these little angels. These little angels are cool. They're they're very mod looking. You see they're they're sort of colorful on the on the original and they are colorful on here too with my fancy my fancy floss. And they're going to look really neat. I haven't decided whether or not to put the little halo around them. I put the trumpet. This the hat. This one I had to uh, put the trumpets, as you can see. One of them I had to. Uh, I just have to finish, but they are kind of neat. I put the feet on there too. I don't think I'm going to put the halos. I'm trying not to get too much uh, back stitching. There really isn't any back stitching here. If you want to call the feet back stitching, I don't. I think that's debatable. But I think this would look good on almost any fabric, any sort of vintage fabric, if I really wanted to take a chance. Now, this is just out of the ball, ball, ballpark, excuse me. Just like take a risk. When I finish this, I could spray it with some coffee and antique it. Should I? Maybe, maybe not. Um, I don't think so. I don't have it in my heart, and I don't think it goes with this particular sampler. I think the sampler looks best as it is. Thoughts, anybody? What do you think about antiquing it at the end? I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> anyway, I'm, I really want to get this finished, and if I'm lucky, I'll finish it by the end of the weekend. Oh, maybe by the end of next week. That would be good. I mean, I, I don't stitch during the day. I work, so I sit there and I sit on the couch after dinner and stitch for an hour or two every night. On the weekend, if I'm lucky, I'll get a few extra hours in. So I can only do so much. I have so many things I want to do. So, anyway, that's Margaret and Margaret Christmas Village Sampler. Still available. Um... An interesting thing happened here. I'm going to show you. I tried using the little clips that I've told people about and it tore the fabric over here. You could see it started to tear the threads. I do not have, I did not have any any sort of uh, fray check on this fabric. I didn't think I need it, nor did I uh, sew it of any any sort. So I, I think I'm not going to use those anymore. I was very disappointed in that. That it, and I didn't pull it that hard. I just put it on the on the outside with the Velcro. Maybe there, this is too big a gap. I don't know, but it did pull it. So I was a little unhappy with that. So we'll see. Now I'm good. I may have to take that off and fray check it so it doesn't shred anymore. That's one thing. And, uh, and work on something else just for a day while the fray check is, is drying. I give fray check overnight. I do not, I would not use it for hours because I think it's still a little tacky when you put it on. Even though it's dry, maybe in a half hour, an hour, I want it to be completely like your nails would be, like super dry. So. What next? Ah, oh, I know. This. So what is this? I went and I found somebody who's a beekeeper on eBay that sells honey. And they also sell very delicious smelling beeswax. Really. I mean, this stuff smells like honey. It's amazing. And they sold me some beeswax. 
Then I said, what am I going to do with my beeswax? Well, I bought some of these. There's this dusty well. Um, I bought this mold. It says, it's a chocolate mold. And it's got three different, I hope you can see it. It's got a Santa. It's got these bells. And it's got this really cute mouse. I think you can see it. So I'm in a double boiler. I'm just guessing how to do this. In a double boiler, I am going to melt some wax. Okay? And when I say double boiler, it's just a pot over a pot of hot water. And I'm going to pour it into these molds and let it dry. I'm not, I think it might come out of this pretty easy, but I'm a little concerned. So I might just spray these with Pam. Probably spray it with Pam, just to make sure it comes out. The only issue with spraying with Pam will be, will it affect some of the some of the detail. Will it sort of blur it? I'm gonna try it with and without. We'll see how it goes. And to make some really nice, some really nice uh, waxers. I can't believe how good this smells. This smells a lot better than the other ones I've gotten. Maybe it smell wears off or maybe people aren't using wax that's right from the honey guy. Because apparently I was talking about wax. There's an awful lot of stuff that comes from overseas that's labeled beeswax that's not even beeswax. So this stuff smells so good. Anyway, that's going to be, not that I, I need another hobby or another thing to do, but I love to experiment. So that's going to be an experiment and an easy experiment. And worst case scenario, doesn't come out, whatever, I can redo it. I would have liked to have gotten some metal molds or uh, maybe some sort of, you know, uh, antique molds or butter molds, but this was very inexpensive. Milky Way molds, Portland, Oregon. Made in the U.S., apparently, supposedly. And uh, they're, they're sort of big, but we're going to try it. Can't wait to see. If anybody has any any sort of hints, helpful hints, please comment below so I can know. Because I'm not, I've never done any sort of wax thing before. Speaking of wax, I bought this at that antique show. Um, it's a, and, and the theme of this is hope, and it says, We Rise by Lifting Others. That's very nice. And it's a homemade candle. What she did was she found vintage and antique vessels of all so sorts. Cups. She had one that was a whole teapot. I mean, all kinds of stuff. This is a uh, some sort of vintage sugar bowl made by a company called Wearbright. And uh, it's so cute. Anyway, this candle smells so good. So wonderful. My God, as nice as anything can be. And she told me how she made her candles. And then we started talking and uh, do you live locally? So forth. I introduced myself. And uh, we, we started talking. Uh, it turns out that uh, we started talking about spirituality and church, what church you went to. And it was nice. It was nice talk, meeting this person. Amazing. So I wanted to show you somebody else that repurposes, and that's what she does. She has a little business that she sells them. So very neat. Now should I show you my vintage finds? Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Because I got a lot of them. Oh, this is, it's too many. I, I figured I'd sell some. Not that I'm, not because I'm going to make a huge profit doing it. It's because I couldn't walk away from some of these unbelievable finds and the prices were good. And I said, wow. 
First things first, uh, this is a vintage firkin, whatever that is. Sort of looks like a shaker, shaker box, but it's made for sugar. It held sugar. And it's real old. You can tell. Just look at the inside. Look at the outside. Look at inside the cover. The wood. It's got a lot of patina. It's, it's definitely old. It smells old. Has that old woods grandma smell. So I, I got one to add to my shaker box collection. Although it's not a shaker box, it's apparently a Frickin. I know nothing about these, but except they're beautiful. And you really could put something on the top of it. You could put a, some sort of, I don't know, uh, there's a lot of round designs that you could put on the top of it and use the inside, of course. But it wasn't very expensive. I was very pleased with this. And it's, it's so cool. I, am, I love the way that these old staples, or whatever they were, sort of bend and have become part of the, the wood almost. I love it. Then outside, outside, I found this. I mean, this is the real deal. This is solid oak, I think it's oak. It's heavy, looks like oak, could be maple, but no, I think it's oak. Got a hole in it, and what a great thing to mount your project on. It would be heavy for the wall, although my husband knows how to, how to anchor it, but they make these fake ones left and right. In fact, I bought one and I mounted something on it. But this is the real deal. How cool is this? I made a beeline for it, and the person's like, well, make me an offer. Okay. So this was, this was very nice. And that's to, you can definitely mount a sampler or a piece on there, and it would look amazing on your wall. It, it really would. Then I saw this sitting there. Another one of those make an offer. It's a double wooden frame. And, hold on, I still haven't mailed in my Christmas sampler. So that, that's looking annoying, right? Hold on, let's... I, I just haven't gotten to the cross-stitch cupboard, and I, I gotta mail this. Remember, remember this? How beautiful it came out? Well, I think this is the right size. Let's see, I haven't checked yet. Okay, and it is. It's the perfect size. So, imagine we put two coordinating samplers. Of course, they're going to be on the same fabric. Now i got to make more of it. Let's put it behind here. This is going to be hard. This is going to be hard to show you. Okay. And imagine we, we have a sampler in here, and then we have another sampler here. How beautiful is that? And, you know, I'm looking how this is made. It's got old wood. It smells old. It looks old. It's handmade. What a beautiful, what a beautiful, really nice frame this is. Once again, was not very expensive. Very pleased with that purchase. And um, I bring it to the cross-stitch cupboard with my own frame and ask them to frame it for me. She's going to laugh. But why not? This, that's why we do the vintage things we do. You're not going to believe the stuff I got. Seriously. Why do I just continue doing this? You, I mean, I couldn't believe it. I had to go to the, I had to make more than one trip to the car. Um, I got this little, I bought this for the frame. I thought the frame was gorgeous. Look at it. Isn't that pretty? This is real old. Look at the sides of the frame. Even the sides are finished in a beautiful way. But it says you, 
You were such a little word, and yet it means so much. I find it in a sunny smile, an understanding touch. It is a bell in memory's hall that rings forever true. I'll passport to the land of dreams. That one word is you. I don't know about the you, <laughs> but I thought it was awesome. It had a little castle, but I love the frame. That's why I bought it. It wasn't very expensive. Super cool. Um, this is something I also found on the outside area. The outside area is the uncovered open flea market area, and you can find some amazing things. Look at this. Eggs and butter. What an amazing bowl to put little, to put little finishes in, right? Eggs and butter, old bowl. I have no idea. I've never seen one like it. Eggs, butter, flour, sugar. But how cool is that for a farmhouse kitchen? That's like amazing. I love it. Once again, was one of those make an offer. I was like, oh, okay. This I walked away from until she, <laughs> she said to me, you must take it because I don't have the proper, I don't have the proper th uh, area to put on it. We all talk about our flower frogs, how cute they are. This is a metal flower frog on a piece of metal, a piece of cast iron. It is super old, super old frog. And it's going to look great with the scissors. It's going to look great. Have to find the right container for it, but this is really cool. I found that and I was very pleasantly pleased. Really neat. This one was a little bowl that is absolutely gorgeous. Art Deco. Little trinket dish. Perfect for just about anything. It says Umberton made for Farberware by Lee Potters USA. Art, true Art Deco. But I love anything with a little thing, with a little uh, handle. Because A, you can put your scissors in that. That's flipping cool, right? Isn't that beautiful? Actually, it's got three. Three scissors. I would never have bought this without that handle. But this is the real deal, folks. These aren't just junky things. I got this cup. Going to make a beautiful pin cushion. I'd like to kick this up. But I think that's kind of neat. It's beautiful. It's old. Crusty and old. But real neat. Love it. This was a freebie. Um, once again, another little handled thing. The guy gave it to me. I don't know why. I was talking to him and he gave it to me. Hey, I'm getting rid of a bunch of stuff. Uh, belong to my mother-in-law. Da, da, da. Here, take a piece. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Just a little freebie. Nippon, Japan. This is definitely hand-painted. Freebie. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I don't have an idea yet, but I will. Very, in, very inexpensive and beautiful linen. This linen can be stitched on. This linen is a, a gorgeous color. It's a little thin because it's, it's just old, I think. It smells old, looks old, but I looked at it. And it definitely can be stitched on. Imagine you put something beautiful on this. I have to do this. I have to stitch on one of these. I have to find the right one. Look at the work on the corner here. Let me just fold that. Look at the work on the corner. All hand done. Pure, 100% pure linen. One, two, three... 
there were three pieces like that and made by the same person. This all just came as a little lot. Uh, this one's got a stain on it, but this is somebody's handiwork. This I don't think is to stitch on. There's nothing to stitch on, but my God, magnificent. I really bought it so I could just stitch on one of those, uh, one of those plain ones. And then these all, again, beautiful, beautiful work. I love this old, I love it. Somebody worked very hard on this. Then I got some pins. These pins are probably not gonna be repurposed. They might, they were too expensive. I usually don't pay this much for pins, but I fell in love with them. One is a very 1950s or 60s Santa. I loved him, had to have him. The other is a snowflake. That is to die for. Imagine having that on your, that needle minder. It's amazing, in perfect condition. And the third one is by somebody named Eisenberg, who that's a pretty famous uh, costume jewelry maker. Still has its tag on, but it's probably one of the most beautiful Christmas trees I've ever seen. Imagine having that as your needle minder. Magnificent. Then I found one of these. This one is in exceptionally good shape. And it's definitely old. If you look at the way it's made, I love the corners. Love the corners. Wow. The way this is made, you can just want to show you. If I do sell this, it's not going to be for cheap because A, it wasn't that cheap for me, and B, it's, it's magnificent. It's a beauty. Somebody, and it's old. This is a real, this one's definitely old. Oh my God. I can't, I gotta stop going to these shows because what ends up happening is I have too much stuff. Hold on. Let me get you the other stuff. You're not gonna believe all this when I show it to you. Oh. Wow, I gotta find a place for all this. My husband's gonna have it fit. This is interesting. Look at this little sewing box. Green painted. It's so beautiful. Found this little baby outside. Three Sisters Soap Washing Powder. Box. Blue. I don't know how old it is, but it is so cute. Very useful. Oh, I do have a chart to show you. I forgot. Um, I don't know. This is a Christmas item. It's a mushroom. I love mushrooms. <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> and it's a pixie, an elf, loved it. It's a planner. Planners are perfect for putting scissors in, scissors, making into a, oops, making into a, some sort of pin cushion. I mean, there's a million things. Flowers. I, I just, I really love Christmas, and I, ha I saw this, and I was like, ooh. And then finally, this. This was somebody's toolbox made out of dairy boxes. 
Smells old, looks old, it's a little beat up. It's great. <laughs> this is so cool. Really nice. I'm definitely going to have to sell a few of these items because I don't have room for all of them. So, probably one at a time. And I did find an electric, a little um, Santa's house that it lights up. And I thought this was so nice that I had to get it. Oh, this was not cross-stitch related, girls. <laughs> so, I got to clean this up. Finally, new item. I got Christmas luminaries by the Good Housewife. Good Huswife. Found it on Stash, one of the Stash Unload. And this one came with, with the, uh, the DMC and some fabric of sorts to make it on. There's something about them I just like. Wow, right? Look at all this cool stuff. Let's talk about winners of giveaways. Uh, I have been unable to, to contact the last two winners. Um, I don't know why, because they're people I'm not friends with. One of them I did find on Facebook, and I texted her, uh, instant messaged her, and not everybody takes instant messages from people they don't know, so she did not respond. Let me just double check. Hmm. Very, uh, very annoying, but what are you going to do? So I can't, I can't find her, but um, anyway, I'm going to give you, let, anybody, whoever, I remember that I'm going to have a giveaway for last video for that Stitches and Spice linen. I have nice stuff that I do giveaways and I can't find, I cannot find the people that, uh, that won. So what I'm going to do is just do, hopefully I'll, I'll get it. Let me go to this, this one. Um, let's see, I'm going to, uh, let's see, uh, we have 30 comments. All right, let's see if we can do the giveaway now. And I'm going to really try hard to find these other people. <laughs> it's crazy, right? Uh, let's go to YouTube, random comment picker, YouTube, random comment picker. Let me get the... Hold on, random, let me copy the link. We'll go to the link. Let's put that in there, where I want to go. Hold on, oh yeah, hold on. Let's try that again. Copy link. Paste. Get YouTube comments. So it's Stitches and Spice Linen, which is really nice linen that is very hard to find. And we're going to start the raffle and pick a random winner. And anybody watching this, please check other videos to see if you're the winner, because if you are, you need to contact me. The winner is Maine Girl. Thank you for another wonderful video. I always enjoy seeing you come up on my playlist. I love seeing all your treasures and beautiful stitching. I hope you had a great time at the antique show. I love searching for old treasures. XO Michelle. Michelle, find me on Facebook. Natalie Willis. Go to the Vintage Cross Stitch Niche. niche excuse me. Post something. <laughs> see if we can find you because the linen's yours. So I will see if I can. Um, I'm going to try to find you, main girl. And... Uh, and that's it. The, I don't know what I'm going to do for a giveaway for this one. Hmm. This is a hard one. What do I do for a giveaway? Hmm. I got to think about it. Um... Let me think, what can I do for a giveaway? I have so much stuff I can really give away. Um, I'll tell you what, for, a, for the giveaway for this video, 
as long as I can find the person that wins, because this is a hard thing and I can't always find them, you will be getting a care package from me, okay? Your care package will have hand-dyed linen, will have a vintage item of some sort, will have maybe a pair of vintage scissors. You will get a nice care package from me. And the, the question you need to answer is, have you repurposed any antique or vintage items into a cross stitch project? Have you, what did you do? I would love to see a photo if you can send it to me on the vintage or post it on the vintage cross stitch niche Facebook group site. That would be great. Let me know. All right. We're almost done guys. Hope you're not too bored. Oh, and here's the, uh, the stitches and spice linen from last time. And from the time before this was, this was also the, the I have I have three I have two two giveaways that I had uh, three giveaways now two of which I can't find the person so but hopefully we find main girl because this is yours all right so first thing I'm going to show you is great accessories to sew because I'm learning how to sew I just learned how to use my machine and I saw some stuff that would be great for cross stitch in here. Um, just a lot of stitchers projects. So as you can see, there's directions how to make this. Am I losing it? Here, let me take the dust cover off. I know it's sacrilege, but this is some sort of thing that you can hang from your ironing board that holds all your ironing, all your ironing paraphernalia. That's cool. So, and there's a lot of, a lot of directions. Um, a small space organizer that goes over a door or in a closet or something. Directions how to make that. Directions how to make a sewer's apron. An apron which has all your stuff in it. Looks like a fanny pack. So you've got all your directions in here for all of these. Directions how to make your lined basket, how to take any old basket and line it. Cushion back cushion, uh, chair back cushion and caddy. This looks very complicated, but anyway, how to make your chair into a cross stitch heaven with all that storage. These are, these are interesting, interesting things. There's a vest in here. I don't know about the vest. Heart in hand shuttling. Directions how to make that. Um, let's see. Needlepoint pin cushion. There's one in here. I don't know if I'm going to show you needlepoint. Um, A buckshot bag pressing accessory. Don't ask me if anybody could tell me what you do with the buckshot. You let me know, but it's a bag of buckshot and it's a sewing accessory. This bag is especially helpful for pressing darts and other curved seams. Interesting. Um, let's see. Uh, zip clean serger silencer. I don't know about that. How to make a sewing machine cover. That one's a pleat. A little bit messy looking to me, but kind of neat. Um, new life for old treasure. I mean, this is a spool caddy. There's directions how to make this right in this book. cool book. Fabric holder. A spool table. I love 
this book. A scissors holster for your chair. I don't know, that's kind of interesting. A sewer's journal. Directions on how to make this, this journal. All kinds of stuff that's really applicable to what we do. So, I love it. A practical tapestry, whatever this is. Magnificent wall hanging is first of all a work of art plus an organizer. It's a wall hanging organizer for needlework supplies. So there's all kinds of directions in here and very, very neat. I love some of these pictures they have of these sewing rooms. The book is called Great Sewing Accessories to Sew. And Sterling Publishing Company, what year is this? Printed in the USA, so it can't be new, um, unfortunately. Um, 1998, not that far off. I think it's great. I found this at a thrift store, of course. Now we have the magazine and the cross stitch Christmas. I think it's too much to do both. I think I'm going to do just the magazine. Call it a day so I can clean this mess up in here. This is the 2006 Christmas ornament edition. It's already a long time ago. So I know I haven't shown you this one, but I'm going to. 2006 Christmas Ornaments Collection. Um, I don't think they named them like they did before. I'm not sure. But on this particular page, there's old colonial designs, praiseworthy stitches, the cat's whiskers, Patricia Ann, Little House Needleworks, Whiskey Creek, Water's Edge, and Angel Stitching. My favorite is definitely number two, which is praiseworthy stitches. So number two is Praiseworthy Stitches. Cute ornaments, huh? Like that little one. They're all numbered as you can see. What is that little one? Number six. It's interesting. Whiskey Creek. Next. Shepherd's Bush, Julia Lucas, Cross-Eyed Cricket, Bright Needle, Debbie's Designs, The Sunflower Seed, Moss Creek, and Cindy Valentine. My favorite, hmm, oh I like that one, number six, The Sunflower Seed, We Bring Him Silver and Gold. Cute, right? Next, Prairie Moon, Glory B, The Prairie Schooler, Little by Little, Homespun Elegance, Charlotte's Web, and Country Cottage in Needleworks. My favorite, I really like number three, um, which is The Prairie Schooler. That's the Prairie Schooler ornament right there. Really cute. Number one is uh, Prairie Moon. It's, it's different on that pink linen. Sisters and Best Friends, Thistle Strats, Threads, The Stitch Works, Busy Creations, Ursula Michael, Val Stuff, and Kitty and Me. And my favorite is, I, no, number two, which is Thistle Threads, Let It Snow, which is that little itty bitty one up there. See that guy? I like the shape of that. I think that's over one, actually. 
And they're all snowmen themed. Wow, very nice. Oh, these are awesome. Wow. Very vintagey looking. Blue ribbon designs, fancy work with my needle, cherished stitches, hands to work, blackbird designs, and the strawberry tree. Wow. This blackbird designs one is actually a strawberry pin keep. Really cool, which is my favorite. Oh, I love so many of them. I love all this, all of them on this page. I just want to make sure you get to see them all. Can you see the little ones? The strawberry keep, pin keep. That's that's blackberry designs. That strawberry. Blackbird Designs. If you want a Blackbird Designs that nobody else has, get this magazine. Quaker Medallion Strawberry Pin Keep. It's awesome. I love it. I can't believe how nice that is. I really, I like this number two, Fancy Work. The Sampler Noel is really cute. Wow. That strawberry is something else. Next, Amaryllis Artworks, Gemini, Elizabeth Designs, Brutter Cup, la -dee da the work basket and serendipity. And my favorite is La Di Da for sure. Well, hmm. I like two of them are tied. La Di Da, the Christmas Cardinal, and then number six, the work basket, which is called Quaker Reindeer. Oh, wow. Look at that reindeer. Look at that Quaker reindeer. That's cool and beautiful. And that's the La Di Da one, little the Cardinal. But they're all nice. This is an exceptionally nice magazine, this Christmas edition. I think some of the older Christmas editions from the 2000s are nicer than the recent ones. I really do. No disrespect to some of the newer designers. I just like some of these really a lot. I mean, look at that. That reindeer in the middle is amazing. I do like that Lottie Doll one too, but that reindeer, I didn't even, it's, it's just something very special about it. Lynn's Prints, Trail Creek Farm, Charlotte's Collectibles, Knotted Tree, Raise the Roof Designs, Twisted Oak, M Designs, and Still Stitching with Susan. I sort of like this one that says, Chris, oh wow, no, number six, Twisted Oak Design, Edgar Elf. Okay, that's my favorite is that elf. I think that cookie is hilarious. Look at the Christmas cookie. Christmas costing me an arm and a leg, and he's missing his leg. Wow, look at these. Something else, right? Erica Michaels, Gentle Pursuit, The Victoria Sampler, Monster Bubbles, Forget Me Not, Scandinavian Stitches, Charlene Designs, and Jeanette Douglas. My favorite is number one, Erica Michaels, that purple candle. Look at the purple candle. But they're all cute. That Jeanette Douglas is cute. The, the little, um, whatever you want to call that roll. Hope you can see them all. This doesn't end, huh? Lizzie Kate, WeWorks, Wild Heart, JBW, Periwinkle Promises, Sue Hillis, Needle Play, and the Nordic Needle. Hmm. I like this one. This What's that called? Number five. Periwinkle Promises. 
I guess that's some sort of pulled threads on it. Check that out, what they did. Like I said, these magazines can be found. You just have to search for them. Ladybug Lane, Full Circle, Imaginating, Mosey and Me, The Vermilion Stitchery, Dragon Dreams, and Heartstrings. These are all Santas. Hmm. I like this one, number five, the Vermilion Stitchery, which is a sand on it. I just like the guy right there. They're all nice sands. Is that it? I think that's it. Let me just see if there's any other goodies in this magazine because some of them are actually in the ads. Um, this is a goodie. This is by the work basket. Quaker Santa and Quaker Snowman. I've never seen it, but it's an ad. Very beautiful. Look at that. Very, very pretty. These work basket people do that Quaker reindeer that I really like. Here's the thing on them. Candy Scott and Mary Olson. Work basket. Very beautiful. Wow. So sometimes there's some stuff in ads that I do like. And uh, once again, look at all the shop list listings. There were a number of pages of them. Pages and pages and pages of shop list listings that don't exist anymore. Just a sign of the times. Let's see what was in Florida. Were they done by, let's see, Dixie to uh, Tennessee. Every, uh, just pages and pages and pages. But, um, anyway, I'm just, just making sure there's nothing else. But these are beautiful, these are beautiful if you can find the old, the older ones. I'm not talking about the 80s ones because I think they're a little, they're a little dated. I'm talking about the 2000s and, and more. Just amazing. That's a lot of stuff, right? We did not do a Christmas carol. Oh my goody, or goodness. Let's, how do we not do the Christmas carol? I was right about to end this. <laughs> I have another book just to let you know. I don't know if I showed this to you last time called The Stories Behind the Great Traditions of Christmas. Um, I really liked reading this book. I haven't read everything, but I've read pieces of it because you can read pieces. It goes through every tradition and its history behind it. I think I showed you. We're going to be doing that too around the holidays. But now we're going to do our traditional Christmas carol, Better Late Than Ever. Oh, this is hard to pick one because then I sort of know. Let's see. There we go. Just randomly pick. Okay. At last the dinner was all done. The cloth was cleared, the earth swept, and the fire made up. The compound in the jug being tasted and considered perfect. Apples and oranges were put on the table, and a shovel full of chestnuts on the fire. Then all the Cratchit family drew round the earth in what Bob Cratchit called a circle, meaning half a one. And at Bob Cratchit's elbow stood the family display of glass, two tumblers, and a custard cup without a handle. These held the hot stuff from the jug, whoever as well as golden goblets would have done. And Bob served it out with beaming looks while the chestnuts on the fire sputtered and cracked noisily. Then Bob proposed, A Merry Christmas to us. 
my dears, God bless us, in which the family echoed. God bless us, everyone, said Tiny Tim, the last of all. He sat very close to his father's side upon his little stool. Bob held his withered little hand in his as if he loved the child and wished to keep him by his side and dreaded that he might be taken from him. Spirit, said Scrooge, with an interest he had never felt before. Tell me if Tiny Tim will live. I see a vacant seat, replied the ghost, in the poor chimney corner and a crutch without an owner, carefully preserved. If these shadows remain unaltered by the future, the child will die. No, no, said Scrooge. Oh, no, kind spirit. Say he will be spared. If these shadows remain unaltered by the future, none other, none other of my race, returned the ghost, will find him here. What then? If he be like to die, he had better do it and decrease the surplus population. Scrooge hung his head to hear his own words quoted by the spirit and was overcome with penitence and grief. Man, said the ghost, if man you be in heart, not adamant, forbear that wicked cant until you have discovered what the surplus is and where it is. Will you decide what men shall live, what men shall die? It may be that in the sight of heaven you are more worthless and less fit to live than millions like this poor man's child. O oh God, to hear the insect on the leaf pronouncing on too much life among his hungry brothers in the dust. Scrooge bent before the ghost's rebuke, and trembling cast his eyes upon the ground, but he raised them speedily upon hearing his own name. Mr. Scrooge, I'll give you Mr. Scrooge, the founder of the feast. Powerful, powerful when he sees the child and Scrooge had never, I'm not going to say never because we don't really know if at one point before Scrooge was abused and damaged. I mean, he was an abused child, uh, shunned by his father because the mother died in childbirth. And we, we don't know if Scrooge, what, what if he would have been like had he not gone through these childhood traumas. But in any case, Scrooge had lost his empathy for others. And, and Scrooge, he, he now saw a child and Bob Cratchit's family and Bob Cratchit had worked for Scrooge for a number of years and he was worried that this child was going to die. It was a big change for him. And the spirit is saying, well, you don't care. I mean, you've said that many times, uh, you know, that the poor shall di should die because they're a drain on the population. Very powerful. I find myself having to, having to remind myself that empathy is important, that there are people that are poor not by their own doing, so to speak. It's, I've worked very hard my entire life. I worked at McDonald's when I was 15. I worked from after school till closing, which back then was around midnight, one o'clock in the morning. And sometimes I would open it before school, meaning I'd go in at around 5.30 in the morning and leave and go to school at nine. Or work double shifts even. I mean, I worked a lot of hours. And I remember how hard it was to work for so little money. I think I made about two twenty-five an hour back then. That was minimum wage. And uh, but I always said to myself, "I'm going to work at my way out of this. There's no way I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. I'm I'm not going to struggle like this." And I did. I went and I got an education. So I find myself saying, "Well, adults who are still in that situation, why didn't they get themselves more of an education?" It's their own fault. Maybe it is, and maybe it isn't. But I have to remind myself that not everyone is capable of making the right move. Or people have illnesses that prevent them, whether or not it be physical or more or a psychiatric type thing. But I do find myself having to, rem 
to remind myself, hey, you were there. I was there. So that's a, that's a good lesson. That's why I love A Christmas Carol, because everybody can reflect on it and see some of them. If anybody tells, will, will say that, it, that they have never been guilty of looking down on somebody or um, trying to blame them for their plight or this and that, and there are some people that do cause their own problems. I mean, we all know that. It's, it's a sad statement, but it's true. You know, if, if, I mean, if you say you've never done that, then you're not telling me the truth because everybody, everybody falters. We're, we're, we are imperfect. Everyone is imperfect. So anyway, it's a good passage. I just imagine Tiny Tim sitting there and saying, God bless us, everyone. And that whole thing about chestnuts on the fire, I'm wondering if that's where the song got it from because, you know, the whole chestnuts roasting on an open fire came many, many, many years later. I think like 1930s or something song. And then when A Christmas Carol was written. So I always wonder whether or not that came through there. Anyway, um, I enjoy making these videos. I'm glad that, pe that people enjoy watching them. I appreciate the positive feedback extremely much. Uh, I appreciate any feedback, <laughs> negative feedback. Who wants negative feedback? But I do appreciate it. Um, I, we all can learn. If I don't always put all the details underneath the video, it means I just don't have time to do it. Again, I work full time. I do not make a living doing cross stitch, nor do I, nor am I retired, or nor am I independently wealthy. So I do work. So this is a hobby for me. And, you know, I, I, I can only do what I can do. But uh, I do apologize. I am open to questions. If you have any questions, please feel free to answer them. And I will to ask and I will answer them best I can. It's going to be a busy weekend. Uh, I got to clean this up. Everybody enjoy and from my home to yours, keep stitching.